All right, this is, uh, I believe, where I'm going to put my charge controller. It's up in here with a storage compartment slash uh, child bunk. I don't have the camper plugged in, so I got no lights. And then right over there in that corner, or at the bottom, I'm going to run my wire in from the solar panels coming down through the vent from the refrigerator and it'll come right in that wall over to the charge controller so that's update on the inside I think that's where that's gonna go all right I got some more filming to do all right I'm just showing you a little trick that I do uh, when things are gonna get tough tough on me at least that's a battery prop L16 crown. This is just a cardboard box. And what I did is I made an identical copy of the crown battery. And it works out real well because this doesn't weigh nothing. These batteries are 121 pounds a piece, so moving those around gets old. All right, I'm just showing my little trick. And I can also show you where these are gonna go. I just got done making another inch of room in the storage compartment. <clears throat> These batteries are going to go right in here. And you can see where the, the prop comes in handy. Try doing that with a 120 pound battery. And that's where my batteries are going to go. Like that. And then another one right here in front of it and down inside that you can't see that's a rod locker it goes all the way to the refrigerator I think that's where I'm gonna run my uh, inverter cables the, the 110 volt lines I mean anyway that's just a little trick I use I build props every now and then I've got another one inside for the uh, the inverter that I have in my house and the one I'm using is actually about four inches narrower and again, it's much easier to pick up a box than it is to pick up the real item. What I did here is I just took these lips off. I'm about deaf from the die grinder, but I got it done. All right, it's progressing along. Be back in a while. All right, I'm doing my uh, battery uh, area venting install, and I made that little piece of... Uh, galvanize this drip edge actually and I bent it to go around in that rectangular tube right up in there and I just took a piece of rubber hose as a sealer and what this is gonna do if I can get in here this goes in here it's gonna get screwed in here hopefully I'm not blocking the view and that's gonna deflect air out the side of the camper and I'm going to use my, my fan and this goes over here like that and it blows the air out hopefully I'm not in the shot too much and then over here on this side see if I can do it with the camera I drilled uh, six big holes to let the fresh air in so that's how I got away now the tripod's messing with me that's how I got away with the uh, venting the battery. All right, I'm kind of stuck here. The tripod's jamming up. I just wanted to share that, give somebody an idea how to do it. All right, over and out. Okay, this is the uh, exhaust fan test for the battery bank. I got a little handy dandy cigar here. I'm gonna blow some smoke in. You can see it get sucked right up. Hopefully I caught that. It's windy as hell out here. All right, I'm gonna try this again. It was uh, too wiggly before. I got my charge controller hooked up best I can. Um, 
right now the batteries are almost charged so I've got 66.6 volts at 2.6 amps coming in and that translates to 14.9 at 11.1 .1. and I have my exhaust fan hooked up to the light load under the timer setting so it's 14.9 volts going out at 0.1 amp almost nothing and what I was also able to do was finally get the date and time correct I don't know how correct that is because I changed everything. That's your battery voltage, state of charge 100%, should be going float shortly. It knocked the 500 watts down to 175. I don't know how to change Celsius to Fahrenheit, I haven't figured that out or if it's even possible. And there's the load which would be the fan, <clears throat> it's hooked up on the load section of the uh, charge controller which I also hooked up the uh, battery temperature compensator cable today so it has a cable to correct for temperature and on the timer control uh, the only thing I've figured out so far is I set it from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. I believe thereabouts so that exhaust fan will be going until I can figure out a better way to do it it draws like I don't know two watts of power it's almost nothing So. Got a happy face on the battery. And on here we have that's the, uh, the Go Power Station. Now I gotta just clean up some wires, clean up the camper a little bit, and then I'll show you the completed install. Alright, that's it for now. Okay, I'm just going to show here the uh, the wire or the inverter. I ran it down in here alongside the other wire for the refrigerator and it goes down on the refrigerator top of the LP tank space kind of deal over to the water uh, tank across the water tank and I'll show you that in a minute okay then it comes across the uh, water tank as I said and just like in my other camper install the uh, install the here. I made a hole on the side here where this cord can come through. And if I want to run it off the generator, I just plug it in the generator. I'll plug it into itself like it is now. It's just run off the inverter. So that's how that works, just like the other camera. Okay, I'm going to give you a quick look inside the uh, battery room, hopefully. Uh, that's my 200 amp breaker. I still have some wires to tighten up. There's another fuse for the battery. And I've got the batteries installed. I made this so I can take the batteries out from this doorway or inside the camera, a uh, camper where I can service them. I'll show you that next. Be right back. Okay, hopefully this is going to cooperate with me. Inside here in the cabin, you get to the batteries pretty simply actually. You just uh, Lift this cushion up, lift this piece of paneling that was uh, glued down, and there you have the batteries, complete with their water miser caps on, and my uh, jumper cable, inverter cables, and charge cables. Charge cables are 4 uh audio pipe, it's uh, audio wire, solid copper, tinned, and 2 gauge. For the inverter and that just worked out so nice just put this down put the cover back down I never see the damage so that's pretty cool and in the corner I don't know if this is going to work either I still have to hide those wires and I'll be back in a second to show you the rest okay inside there is the uh, charge controller and my 1500 watt high surge go power inverter. I'm going to try to put this tripod down gently on the table, not making too many people sick. And how this works is I turn the inverter on from this switch here, and you'll see the lights come on in the cabin. Now the overhead lights are on. The lights uh, on the inverter are all on, and everything appears to be working the way it's supposed to. 
and you can see my batteries are floating at 13.9 and they, the panel's all the way up to 68 volts, 1.3 amps, so they're, uh, they're not doing anything at the moment, full sun. So anyway, that's the uh, first peak of the completed camper. As far as the solar installation goes, I need to go get some more wire ties, zip ties, and uh, cable wraps. I ran out of everything, but it uh, turned out pretty well. This charge controller, I'm still getting to know it, but it seems like it works pretty good. And then again, the, uh, the Go Power Remote Control thing is pretty cool because when you close this up, you really don't see anything other than the gauges. It's just the uh, hard to move around in here with the tripod. I mean, it just looks like a regular camper except for those two items sticking out, out at you. All right, well, my next adventure is I got a brand new water heater to install, LP water heater, because mine's leaking. And I'm gonna do a AC conversion, so it'll run off of AC, obviously from the solar, or LP gas to save LP, so, that, so I'm gonna be doing that next. So anyway, that's the update. The camper's electrified, everything's working, and I'm a happy guy, and it finally stopped raining, so I got a sunny day to show this. All right, thanks for watching. All right, this is going to be an inverter test. Let's see if it's going to run this AC. Here I go. Well, it's running the fan right now. Might be too cold for the AC to come on. There she goes. Don't be damn, it's working. Look at this, she's blowing cold air. And there's the uh, inverter charge output going up. I'm going to run it up into the uh, low voltage. I'm going to shut this thing down. Yeah, she was kicking it right out, but that's good. The inverter, uh, the inverter did start it up. And the uh, little orange lights came on, which is caution. It's, it's draining too much from the battery. So that's good. I'm happy with that inverter. It did turn the AC on, but it's uh, it's not going to run the AC. I maybe should have put double out wires going up to that, but it don't matter. I don't plan on using that for the AC anyway. I'm going to use the little uh, Predator generator, which I think I'm going to test that next. All right, I'll be back.